Okay, another thing I want to show you guys is how we held these together. I got this tip from a YouTube video. I thought it was pretty slick, simple, cheap. All we did was use binder clips. These are one and a half, or one and a quarter inch binder clips. You can purchase a pack of 12 of them from Amazon for $4.70. You can purchase them from any Walmart, any office supply store, but these are one and a quarter inch. They make larger ones, smaller ones. I recommend using these. And the reason why is because of this dimension here. You'll note when we put this on here, and we'll go a little bit closer so you can see, you don't want something so wide that it's going to be sticking out. Because remember, the bottom of this is going to lay in that tray. If this sticks out further, it's going to be off one way or the other. So I recommend using the one and a quarter inch ones. And then you can just put two on each side to go all the way around. So you would need eight in total. For what I'm going to do right now, I'll just show you um, to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. Right here. So that's how it goes. Now. We're pretty tight on space inside of ours, so we can't leave these on. So what I did was, whenever we put them on the frame, then I just squoze in on these little clips, took them off. Pretty simple. And just left this on. Then whenever we pulled it out of the oven, you just pop it off and it's ready to go. Whenever you're ready to put it on again, all you got to do is slide this into the holes and it's back in. It only takes a second, no big deal. There's probably other clamps that you could get that may work better, but these are very inexpensive. Um, if you're not using them for this, you can use them for whatever else you're going to use them for. And you may even have some of these already laying around your house like we did. So this is what I would recommend using to do that, but this is a very crucial part. You have to have some way to hold this together that's not going to take up a lot of space inside of the toaster oven. All right, guys, so another thing that we want to show you on this is the plastic that we used to create the molds, or not to create the molds, I apologize, to create the, uh, the lenses that we use for a mask. This is very important, and the reason I say that is because it took me a while to find the right type of plastic, or remove it from the plastic sheet, and just so you know, I'll zoom in so you can see it. I purchased this from Amazon. There will be a link in the description. But this is called Mega Format Flexible Plastic Panel. It comes in an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And this is a six pack. We purchased these for $14.18 per the pack. Here's what it looks like. You see it's very flexible, no matter which way you bend it. That's crucial here. I'm gonna show you why. When I first started this, we tried to use this. This is a PET plastic. We bought a sheet from, I think it was Hobby Lobby, and it was a couple bucks for like a two by four sheet, which is, you know, it's fine, whatever. Um, but the problem is, yes, it's very transparent. You can see through it fine. These sheets you can as well. Um, it looks a little hazy right now because it's still got the protective plastic on it, and I'm not going to pull that off right now because we don't need to do anything with this. But uh, this is clear too, so no problem there. But you'll notice that this is all cracked up. And the reason why is because this particular plastic, when you get it hot and it dries again, it becomes very brittle. And it will literally just break off and crack in your hands. This stuff, however, this is almost like a, I would compare it to maybe a um, two liter bottle um, of Coke or whatever. You can, you can bend it. And it's great because if you noticed on the molds that we made, maybe you didn't notice, but my great engineering skills or lack thereof um, I've never done anything with modeling before doing this mask so there's definitely a lot to be learned there but as you can see we've got this edge that comes in now this is a no-no from a molding standpoint but I didn't care I just wanted to get this done and it worked out fine um, with this plastic though even though the plastic goes in it's so flexible that I was able to just pop it off and use it with this other plastic, this stuff, I tried to cut it, and every time I would do anything with it, it just kept cracking and popping and giving, giving me all kinds of trouble. So this stuff's junk. We don't want to mess with it. This right here is what you need. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, 14 sheets, or sorry, six sheets at $14, but it's well worth it. 
I bought, I ended up buying three sheet, three packs of these because like I said, we had some issues just learning how to get the heat right and do all these different things, but it ended up working out all right. And uh, these are what I would recommend. I think they make them in different size sheets, different quantities, different things. But this is what I needed for, for this particular project. So it's what we ended up using. Now, I also want to show you what we did to get to the size we needed. So we know we had our frame here. So what we did was we just set the plastic down. I lined the frame up in the corner here. And then I just took a pencil, went around the outside, and then I came back with scissors and cut it. You can just cut it with scissors. You don't need a box cutter or anything like that. Once I had my line, I just went through and cut around it, no problem. And then once it was done, I removed the, the two sides to it, the protective sheets. You need to remove that before you put it in the oven. Um, I'm not sure what would happen, but I do not think it would be good. So make sure you remove the two uh, sides, the, the protective plastic sheets on both sides, or the plastic film, sorry. You sandwich it between the two, uh, the two frames like this, and then you'll put your clamps on to hold it in place. All right, you guys, now for the moment that you've all waited for. We went through all the processes of all the parts that we needed. You got to see us make everything. And now let's show you the final result. So here's one of our molds. And here is the plastic top. You can see it worked out pretty good. I've already trimmed it up to fit in the mask. But this is what it looks like. So this worked out pretty good and I'll show you one of the finished masks. Here it is. As you can see everything fits pretty good. No issues. And what we got into on this, the reason why this was so critical for us, the mask making was its own problem. But I wanted to make the eyes similar to our logo which is kind of a egg shaped design. And I had no idea how to do that. It's, it took me forever and I finally got the idea of the vacuum forming, looked online at how to do that and was able to come up with this. But, you know, we went into this with zero knowledge whatsoever of how to do this and came out with a uh, very good um, finished product here, I think anyway, especially for not having any prior experience. This is something that, you know, you could do as well with just a little bit of uh, practice and it don't cost a whole lot of money. Now there are a couple options out there. I will tell you 
all in all, what we what you would be in um, for this, at least what I've calculated, is eighty-eight dollars and forty-seven cents. That's taking into consideration the twenty-dollar toaster oven that we bought, twelve dollars and fifty-four cents for the angle aluminum, three dollars and twenty-nine cents for a countersink bit, five dollars and thirty-eight cents for the corner brackets, five dollars for the hardware. $14.18 for the plastic sheets, $4.70 for the one and a quarter inch binder clips, $16.99 for the quarter inch finished panel plywood, that's a two foot by four foot sheet, $6.39 for a two foot by four foot sheet of pegboard, and again that comes to a total of $88.47. Now, what we didn't take into consideration here was the shop vac. Again, you can use a standard vacuum if you've got one. If that's not strong enough and you don't want to buy a shop vac, you can rent them from different rental places. So that's up to you how much you want to spend on that. But as far as the materials go that I had to buy, um, it was that. And that's really everything you need other than the shop vac. So it's not that much money to get you know, good results. There are some options out there that you can look at. There are um, plastic denture molds that you can buy. It's a, it's a denture making machine and you can mold small parts. And I thought about doing that. The problem was our molds that we used were too big to fit into that. So that's why I went this route. You could also purchase a very nice uh, larger one if you're gonna do large scale projects. Who's this for? This is for someone that is going to do either a project like we did and you need you know, a handful of these things, or maybe you're gonna do a project here, there, every once in a while. This is, this is a good solution. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's not too, it doesn't take too long to make it. And once you've got your box and everything made, the actual process only takes a minute. You just gotta heat up the plastic and then vacuum form it on there. It doesn't take long at all. Um, I don't think it's for a long-term use. It's if somebody is wanting to do this, you know, on a regular basis, pumping out a lot of different pieces, I would probably just spend the money up front, buy some equipment, and be done with it. But you know, maybe if you don't have the money initially and you're wanting to just start out and you can get all the equipment you need, great, you can do it that way. Or if again this is just for a hobby or just projects here and there, then this is a great idea. If you found this helpful at all, please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.